You know, I was painting the other day, and this is a card, by the way. It's just a plain plastic card. Um, I was painting the other day, and I was trying out a different paint, and I realized that paint it, it's so much like a relationship. When you paint, you have this relationship with your paint. And you know the amazing thing is that it's kind of like if you want success in your drawings or success in your paintings, you really do have to respect the paint. And I say this because it just, I couldn't help but think about how we fight our paint so much, right? We really do. We fight the paint. And it's just going to do what it's going to do. Like every paint has a different way that it wants to react, a different way it's going to get on the paper that you're using, depending on the kind of paper that you chose. You know, some papers are going to um, bleed a lot more. Some are going to hold on to water more than others. And so your relationship with the paint is going to be all contingent on whether you let paint do its thing or if you fight it. And I wanted to bring this story up to you because I realized that a lot of people, I think, fight what they have. Well, you know, like they'll use a certain kind of paint and they'll get upset that it doesn't react or act like something else that they've used or something they're seeing someone else use. Like, your paint might not be doing this, right? But don't fight your paint, just see what it does. And if you don't like what it does, try another paint, try another paper. But I think the big point that I learned and wanted to bring up to you guys in this class was that the relationship an artist has with the medium and the things that the tools that they use that is very similar to a relationship in real life because what happens is if you let someone be themselves you're going to get the best of them and therefore they're going to bring out the best in you but if you don't let somebody be themselves and you fight it and you try to change them into something that they're not then ultimately you don't become your best self and they aren't their best self and you never get the best out of them because you're always creating a situation where they can't live up to your expectations. So art and the materials that you use are just like that. It's exactly like that. You're gonna have things that are going to fight you and you're going to have things that are not. And I think if you're gonna have success in your painting, you one thing that you can do for yourself is just give yourself the freedom to experiment and understand what you're working with. If something isn't working out, then try and see what it wants to do instead of what you want it to do. And if you really want to accomplish something, maybe you can find a happy medium in those two things, right? In marrying what it actually can do for you and what you want it to turn out like, what you want it to look like. I think that's one of the best pieces of advice that I can actually give myself and pass on to you guys too as you enter this journey into watercolor. Okay, so what I did here was I took a plastic card and I just got some paint on it from my palette. This is the cerulean blue that I said I like so much, you see why? And I wet just the top part because I wanted, without having to use masking fluid, I wanted to leave some of these areas white and light. And I wanted to just let the paint do its thing. Now, a lot of times I would pick this up and let it roll forward but I don't have a luxury of that. And so I kind of have a little bit of a limitation there, but to me, it's not limiting. And like I just explained to you, I'm just gonna let the paint do what it wants to do. And I'm gonna see where I end up with it. So I'm taking a flat brush, I'm dipping it in water 
I'm adding more paint to get a little more depth and dimension and then I'm just kind of getting this brush and just dragging it around and letting it do some different shapes and I dragged it up here so that I could actually create more of like a sky tone and I'm using a paper towel to get some clouds out there just get some different dimensions just by removing some of the paint. Now you might be working with paper that's hanging onto your paint or maybe you're working with paint that is um, not doing exactly what my paint is doing or maybe you didn't get your paper wet enough. Maybe it's not holding down because you can see it's kind of like lifting off of the surface a little bit too. So um, you definitely don't want to fight that. That's why we have it taped down so that it doesn't um, it doesn't actually lift off but I really love what this is doing and I can actually pull some of the paint like if I get it on here I can use this tool to try to kind of create some upward motions in here and you can see by adding more water it just kind of like blends it out right so if I didn't want that look I would have to do something else to it so I'm just kind of like using this and going through, I'm going to add a little more of the indigo, which is a great thing to have on hand because indigo is such a great, like very dark color. And you can see where this is really uh, wet. It's pulling the indigo out almost like trees. So now I've got kind of like a little bit of a blooming thing going on, but I really love it. It's so pretty. And see, I never knew I could do this before. So this is what I'm saying, is by letting the paint be itself, by letting it do what it's just meant or designed to do, which you never really know until you get paper, water, brush, and your hand together, that's where you discover the madness. That's where you discover the really cool things that can happen that you never knew could happen before. That's awesome. So now this is kind of a dark color, so I'm probably not going to want it here as much, but I'm just gonna like experiment. Let's just see what it looks like. It's by tapping some of it here. Not bad. Let's rinse the brush out and let's bring that cerulean in. It's kind of cool actually, right? This is that Winsor Newton. Um, indigo it is pretty cool now my paper is bubbled right so what I'm doing is I'm just gonna go with it because you can't fight it so when a paper is bubbling like that it'll tend to pool in the areas where it's not bubbled that much so I'm gonna go ahead and just let it do its thing create kind of a water effect by going very gently through here and just kind of dragging my brush out. This is so pretty. Some of the areas have dried already, so I'm just gonna let them do that. I'm not gonna re-wet them because I kind of like some of this, these areas here that are really stark, you know, like the big contrast. Then if I wet my brush again and kind of get some of the color out of there, I can go back in and just with this flat brush, just kind of wash in some lighter blue. Look at that. That's really cool. So now that I have this light blue, I'm going to go ahead and start over here and do something else. And we're going to just paint the light blue across the whole sky. Okay. Um, Let's go ahead and try some clouds. Why not, right? So let's take some more of the cerulean. I still have my flat brush that I'm just kind of enjoying working with. And let's go ahead and start another one before I go. <laughs> I don't want to make each lesson too long. Let's go to section two.